And after the homily is done, there should be a moment of silence. Deacon's right. There should be that moment of silence for us to chew on the words that we've just heard. But after that moment of silence, we jump right into the creed, the profession of our faith, with the words, I believe in one God. We profess the creed at each and every Sunday Mass, but the creed also goes by other names. We might call it the profession of faith because we are professing out loud the faith that we share from our baptism. It's also called the symbol of faith, coming from the Greek word symbolon, which means to put or to throw together because they are statements of faith that are put together. Technically, the creed that we profess at each and every Sunday Mass, especially here at Our Lady of Lords, is the Niceno-Constantinopolitan Creed. Try saying that five times fast. Niceno-Constantinopolitan. 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 Nice. It's hard. Just say it once. Niceno-Constantinopolitan. The other major important creed for the Church is the Apostles' Creed. Both of these creeds are intimately connected with baptism, with our baptismal faith. As we profess the creed, we stand and we bow during the words, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. We bow during that part because God, in his infinite love and wisdom, decided to become one of us, to become incarnate, to take on flesh and to live among us. So it's a very important part of a very important prayer. So where does the creed come from? The creed is born out of questions of who God is, and specifically who Jesus Christ is. You see, in the early centuries of the church, there were lots of wrong and false ideas about who Jesus Christ truly was. We call these heresies. The most major and significant heresy of the day had to deal with this idea that Jesus wasn't truly the Son of God. He didn't share the same substance and essence as the Father. That Jesus was a creature, like you and I created, and that Jesus and the Holy Spirit were lesser than the Father. In light of this heresy, the creed reminds us that Jesus Christ is God from God, light from light, true God from true God, that he's begotten, not made, and that he is consubstantial with the Father. Another major heresy was this thought that Jesus was pure spirit. Jesus didn't really become human, that it was an illusion. He didn't really die it was an illusion. It was all an illusion. In the face of this heresy, the creed reminds us each and every week that Jesus Christ truly came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit, was born of the Virgin Mary, that he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, that he suffered, that he died, that he was buried, and that he rose from the dead, emphasizing the fact that he is God who truly became one of us. The last major heresy that I want to talk about is this false idea that Jesus Christ, he was just a guy, you know, he was a good guy, and that God the Father said, hey, you're a good dude. I'm going to send my Holy Spirit upon you and adopt you. That he wasn't truly divine. In the face of this false teaching, the creed reminds us that Jesus Christ is not merely adopted, but the only begotten Son of God. These are the things that we don't believe. These are heresies. To clarify what we do believe, there were two big councils that happened in the 300s to discuss our faith and to figure out what we truly believe. The first of these was the Council of Nicaea in 325. And here, in the city of Nicaea, the bishops gathered to affirm the fact that Jesus Christ truly is divine, that he is God, that he is the Son of God, that he's not merely a creature like you or I. The important word that comes from this council is consubstantial. Now, you may remember a few years ago, Advent of 2011 to be precise, when the translation of the Mass changed in English, the creed was one of the prayers that changed. And one of the words that threw a lot of people off because they had never heard anything quite like it before was this word consubstantial. It comes from 325, from the Council of Nicaea. It's merely a fancy English word from a fancy Latin word that means same substance. Jesus is the same substance, the same essence as the Father. Now we use the actual word from the council. At this council in Nicaea, fun fact, was a certain Saint Nicholas, who we know today as Santa Claus. He was an actual person, a, a bishop in fact, from Turkey. And he got so worked up and so angry at Arius during the council that at one point he reached across the table, legend says, and punched him in the face. About 60 years later, in the city of Constantinople, not Istanbul, another council was called, 381. Here at the Council of Constantinople, not Istanbul, the Creed of Nicaea was affirmed and it was slightly expanded, especially the parts about the Holy Spirit and there was a section added about the Church, how the Church is one holy, Catholic, and apostolic. So the Creed really is born out of both of these councils, the Council of Nicaea and the Council of Constantinople. Hence, the technical name for the Creed that we profess each and every week is not merely the Nicene Creed, but the Niceno-Constantinopolitan Creed. There's still false ideas about who God is floating around in the world today. And we can be influenced by those, but the creed, the symbol of faith, the profession of faith, these words that people have fought over, have bled over, have died over, these very important words that we repeat each and every Sunday are a reminder to us of who God truly is.